Welcome to Brain Health 101. This program is designed to help educate you and give you ideas for activities that can help keep your loved one's brain healthy. It's meant for persons that have been diagnosed with dementia. These activities are designed to be done together in order to maximize their brain health and engage you both. Look for the accompanying episode guide to help you navigate the activities in this program. I'm Dr. Greg Jica, and I'm a neurologist who focuses on taking care of patients with memory problems caused by diseases like Alzheimer's. I'm constantly searching for new ways to slow and or stop memory problems in aging. I've been researching ways to promote healthy brain aging for almost 35 years now, as we continue to look for new medicines and potential cures for diseases like Alzheimer's. Regardless of your background, there's a lot you can do to care for your loved one and promote their brain health, in addition to their regular medical care and the medications we have. The activities featured in this program cover mental stimulation, social engagement, physical activity, healthy brain diets, and many other daily activities which can make a huge impact on their brain health. We hope you try some of these activities with your loved ones at home. Hi there. Thanks for joining us today. I was just thinking about how much I love to travel and explore new places. There's a sense of adventure and new discoveries can be found all around. Traveling gives you an opportunity to see new things, meet new people, try new food, and hear new sounds. What about you? Do you love to travel? I can just see myself in Paris, France sitting outside at a small cafe, looking at the Eiffel Tower, sipping hot coffee, and enjoying a warm croissant. And do you love to people watch as much as I do? All around me, I can hear people speaking in different languages, and I can hear French music from the little shop next door, and the aroma from the cafe smells so good. Sometimes I can picture myself at a lake in the warm summer sun. I can see the boats gliding across the water, and hear the kids playing along the shore. I can see people fishing off the pier, and I wonder if the fish are biting for them. I can feel the sun's warmth on my skin and the cool water as I dip my foot into the lake. I could sit on the shore and watch the water. Sometimes a fish might pop out of the water. I can hear the small waves and the plop when I throw a rock in the water. Have you ever been to the Smoky Mountains? There are places where you can look and all you see around you are mountains and trees, surrounded by nature. You can take a deep breath and feel the crisp mountain air. You can hear the breeze move through the treetops and smell the wildflowers. When you look out, you see mountains, layer after layer. It can be a beautiful sight. Do you have a place that you picture yourself going? Maybe a place you've traveled to before that you would like to visit again? Research shows that travel is good for the brain. It takes us out of our comfort zones and provides us with opportunities to try new things. Doing something new works our brain. Just think, when you travel, you are walking in new areas, seeing things you've never seen before, and you are using your mind to navigate and explore, which keeps your mind active and engaged. Did you know that when you travel to new places and experience something new, the neurons in your brain form new connections? Take some time today to go somewhere new, whether it's on a plane, in a car, or in your mind. For some people, traveling comes easy. They are able to go and do and see places across the country and even the world. Physically, traveling to a new place is not easy for everyone and sometimes can be a big challenge. We'd like to help with that. Here are a few tips to consider when traveling. Traveling with a person with dementia is cause for some careful planning and know-how. This could be in-town trips to the grocery store or to a doctor's visit, or could be a more lengthy drive. If a person with dementia startles easily, it may be a good idea to have them ride in the back seat so they will not be bothered by other vehicles quickly approaching. Keep the temperature in the vehicle comfortable and be aware of verbal and nonverbal signs of discomfort. If needed, assist with buckling the seatbelt. Ask for permission to do so. 
Avoid loud music in the vehicle that may cause agitation. Driving slower than normal may be better for a person with dementia, as rushing and fast movements can be overwhelming. Travel by plane may involve more planning and notifying the airline of specific needs of your loved one. When flying, try to have direct flights or longer layovers to avoid rushing, as rushing can cause trigger agitation. Travel takes a person out of their normal routine. Be aware that that person could wander. To help ease your mind when traveling, you may want to consider some form of wearable identification for your loved one. This could include Medic Alert, Safe Return, Wandering Support. These devices help first responders and families reconnect should a person with dementia become lost. For more information about this program, visit www.medicalert.org or call 1-800-ID-ALERT. Utilizing these tips helps ensure your loved one has better travel experience. For more tips, visit the Alzheimer's Association webpage about traveling tips found here. May your travels be safe. There are many ways to appreciate travel without having to disrupt your daily routine. So, if you are not up to traveling in person, don't worry. We have ways for you to explore new places and new things without leaving your home. Visiting museums when you travel is a great way to find out about the culture and history of the area you are visiting. Today, there are great museum tours available online that can help you travel the world. Let's take a few minutes and see some artwork at our local museum here in Lexington, Kentucky. So the artist we're looking at here, this painting is by David Lucas, who's a Kentucky artist from Letcher County, Kentucky. A number of the paintings that he made uh, were based on the industries and the happenings around that place where he was growing up and where he was living. Um, so focusing on the coal industry here, which was very prominent in Letcher County. Uh, this is from 1984. This piece here is called Locomotive Taking on Water. Uh, you can see the workers uh, bringing the water into the uh, locomotive itself. Lots of scenes of just the work that's happening or just people living out their daily lives. Um, and you kind of get a, a pretty wide view of what's going on in the scene. You can see how small the, the individuals, the, the figures are in proportion to everything else going on. Here we have a photograph by Richard A. Ross. It's called Jockey Silks. And as you can see, it's, it's a photograph that is very kind of wide format. Um, not quite panorama, but it's getting close to that sort of width of a uh, picture. And, and it's full of the jockey silks, these various very brightly colored garments that um, the jockeys would wear while riding the horses on tracks. Um, this is part of a series of photographs that Richard A. Ross created uh, all around um, horse racing, mainly in around kind of like Louisville and, and some of the Kentucky area. Some of the other photographs in the series are at Churchill Downs. I think the jockey silk that pops out to me the most is this uh, pink and green one because it just has these really contrasting colors and it just draws my eye pretty immediately to that. Art has a way of touching people and getting people to think. Art comes in all different shapes and sizes. A masterpiece to one person is not necessarily what someone else would call art. That is what makes art so great. Art also provides us another way to explore different cultures and places. Have you seen artwork from Africa, Australia, Japan? Again, the internet has opened up pathways for us to experience art from around the world helping us to engage our minds and learn new things. Just the other day, I was looking at the online museum for the Louvre in France, and I learned that the Mona Lisa has her own mailbox because of all the love letters she receives. One thing that can be found all over the world is the sunset and the sunrise. Painting a sunset is a great way to start a new hobby. Grab your supplies. Let's create our own masterpiece and put those neurons to work.
Today we are going to be painting this colorful watercolor sunset. So grab your paint and paper and let's begin. First I have 140 pound paper here taped on all four corners. I like to use Strathmore watercolor paper, 140 pounds, and a little masking tape to go all the way around all four corners of the paper because we're going to be using a lot of water today and we need a heavy paper that can handle it. So first thing we're going to do is draw a horizon line. So I'm going to get a ruler out and about halfway up. I like a little more sky than I like sea, but that's my personal preference. So, but about halfway, make a faint line. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, you just need to draw a line to, uh, that you can see to help us keep our horizon line straight. Now we're going to get the paper wet. I'm going to wet my brush. And we're going to go in upward motions, wetting the top part of the paper. I'm going to get close to that horizon line, but I'm not going to touch it. So we're just going to wet the paper on the top. little more want the paper to be shiny we don't want the paper to have puddles in it where fish can swim but a nice shiny paper and we're going to go below that line as well again not touching the horizon up close along the line especially in the middle 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 And we're going to start first with some pink. I'm using quinacridone magenta today, but any pink will do. Get some pink out. I want a very light color pink, so I'm going to thin it out. And then going to, let me check and see, there's a good color. And I'm going to just brush radials out from our center. And we're going to do the same thing below. Just going to loosely go back and forth, especially on the sides with some pink. We'll be adding more on later. And now I'm going to rinse my brush. We're going to get into the yellow. A little yellow out. And we're going to go in between those radials, adding some yellow. We'll get a little more yellow out. We're going to go along the bottom, especially the middle. I'm going to just dance this color along the edge. A little more. Brush it out. Okay, I'm going to get the yellow out of my brush, rinse it out real well. We're going to add some more water again to the top coming in from the top corners of the paper. Just wetting it some in case it's dried out while we were working. And we're going to add some blue. 
or teal preferably if not you can mix some blue and green together if you don't have teal or just use blue it's up to you so I get a little blue out and I'm coming in from the corners adding some blue to the sky Come in from this corner. Just adding it to the top of our skyline. Okay, and we're going to get a little more blue and dance it along the bottom as well. sure not to remove all the pink but layer over some of the pink and the yellow a little more water then out my blue or my teal let's go over to this side do the same thing This nice peaceful longer lines okay we're going to give that a moment and go back up to our sky line and rinse my brush out real well Let's see. I think we'll start with some blue. Already have the blue out. Let's add a little more color to our brush this time, making the color a little brighter. And we're gonna put in a horizon line of clouds. So roll your brush and your paint at a nice good point. And we're gonna just make a regular shaped clouds. Making clouds in watercolor is quite fun, I believe. Colors soften, which is what you want with clouds. So we'll let that soften and expand and we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. Just dancing along the tip of the brush. Adding some of the teal. Now I'm gonna wipe that off my brush, rinse it out real well. And I'm going to soften the clouds, especially close to the horizon line with some yellow. Warm them up a bit. So I get some yellow on my brush. Come over here and add a little bit of yellow into, over top of our blue, into our cloud line. Get a little more yellow, do the other side, same thing. Mm -hmm. Rinse my brush out real well and get some pink. Get some pink out. Do some more clouds on the top. Let's see here. I'll start right here. Same thing, just dancing along. I'm applying very light pressure with my brush. And 
again, we want to warm it up some, closest to the sun. And maybe add a little bit more teal to the top of the cloud, adding a little drama into the bottom as well. bottom cloud to the top. Turns to a nice pretty purple color. Wiping off my brush and going to the other side. I'll get more blue or teal. Make some different shape clouds. Just want them to be irregular. And then we're going to get a little yellow, warm them up on the bottom. my brush. I'm going to get some more teal out. I'm going to go up here on our cloud. It's kind of faded into the background, so I'm going to liven it up a little bit. my brush out maybe a little bit more pink the cloud, farthest away from the sun. We'll let that rest. I'm going to wipe my brush out. And now we're going to go to the bottom and work on our C again. So I'm going to get some more pink paint out and get some in my brush. Maybe add a little water, loosen it up some. going to go over our pink areas not covering them all but some of them making them darker so we'll have a couple shades of pink going on and to the other side get some more water Wipe that out of our brush and rinse out real well and get into the teal. Do the same thing.
my horizon, my skyline is not dry yet, so I'm going to avoid trying to touch it right away. I'm going to add some blue in. I'm going to pull some blue into the sides. And on some of the waves. And then let's do the other side. Again, trying to get close to my horizon without really touching it. Bringing some blue into the sides. And finally, some yellow to go down the middle to brighten up our sunshine. Or sun setting on the water. I'm just dancing it along. Not covering up all the yellow that I did before. I want variations in the yellow. Like taking the yellow out farther as I get farther away from the horizon. Let's see. Rinse. And a little more yellow. Now, I believe I'm happy where it is. Now we, it's a hard part. We have to wait for it to completely dry before we can remove the tape. If you remove the tape while the paper is wet, the paper tends to tear. So uh, wait about five or 10 minutes, make sure the paper's dry, and then remove your masking tape and enjoy your new watercolor painting of a sunset over the sea. Thank you for joining me today and have a good one. That was fun. Getting to explore with paint and make something new is what it's all about. It doesn't really matter what it looks like at the end. We just want to have fun and give our brain a good workout. Singing is another way to give your brain a workout. Have you ever had a song that just gets stuck in your head? Or maybe a song comes on the radio and the next thing you know, you are singing it and everyone around you is singing it too? I find music, especially singing, can be very powerful. It can help us express our emotions, it can help tell stories, and it can help us connect with memories from the past. Did you know that singing is controlled by both the left and the right parts of the brain? Doctors have noticed that sometimes after a person has had a stroke that prevents them from speaking, they can still sing. Fascinating, isn't it? Understanding the importance of singing and how it can utilize different areas of the brain is important for our brain health. Focusing on well-learned and loved songs from our past can be a great source of peace and comfort. If you find yourself a little more anxious or even sad, try listening to some of your favorite music and see if you notice a change. Music can help stimulate the brain as we listen to new tunes and think back to old ones. I wonder if you know these songs we are about to hear. If you do, sing along. My name is Sabrina Hartsfield. I am a board certified music therapist and a current master's student at the University of Kentucky. I'm really excited to sing with you all today. 
While you listen to this song, think about your favorite way that you have traveled in the past. Was it by plane, train, car, ship or boat, a bus or some other way? Pardon me, boy, is that the Chattanooga Choo Choo, track 29? Boy, you can give me a shine. Can you afford to board the Chattanooga Choo Choo? Oh, I've got my fare and just a trifle to spare. You leave the Pennsylvania station about a quarter to four. And then you're in Baltimore Dinner in the diner Nothing could be finer Than to have your ham and eggs in Carolina When you hear the whistle blow an eight to the bar Then you know the Tennessee is not very far Shovel all the coal in Gotta keep it rolling Woo woo Chattanooga There you are There's gonna be a certain party at the station, satin and lace, I used to call funny face. She's gonna cry, till I tell her that I'll never roam. So Chattanooga choo-choo, won't you choo-choo me home? So Chattanooga choo-choo, won't you choo-choo me home? West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, blowing like a breeze. Country roads take me home to the place. Virginia, mountain mama, take me home, country roads. All my memories gathered round her, miners, ladies, stranger to blue water, dark and dusty, painted on the sky misty taste of moonshine teardrops in my eye country roads take me home to the place i belong west virginia The radio reminds me of my home far away And driving down the road I get a feeling That I should have been home yesterday Yesterday Country roads take me home to the place We ain't got 
got a barrel of money. Maybe we're ragged and funny, but we'll travel along, singing a song side by side. We don't know what's coming tomorrow. Maybe it's trouble and sorrow, but we'll travel the road, sharing our load side by side. Through all kinds of weather, what if the sky should fall? Just as long as we're together, really doesn't matter at all. When they've all had their quarrels and parted, we'll be the same as we started, just traveling along, singing a song side by side. When they've all had their quarrels and parted, we'll be the same as we started, just traveling along, singing a song side by side. That song was all about how important it is to have someone by your side. Who in your life is by your side? Who are you thankful for to have in your life? Go and tell that person how much you appreciate them. Isn't it amazing how technology has changed? With simple commands and the right device, I can start and stop music whenever I want. No more having to dig through piles of records or CDs to play my favorite song. And learning how to use new forms of technology is incredibly important for enhancing our brain health. Anytime we learn something new, it is good for our brain. Let's take a few minutes and listen to different ways technology can help us, from keeping up with our calendars and setting reminders, to even finding lost phones. You've heard of Amazon, but have you heard of Alexa? Alexa is an incredible cloud-based in-home technology. You can install an Alexa in your home and it will allow you to do multiple things. You can program it to remind you to take your medicine. You can program it to remind you to take out the trash. You can put a grocery shopping list on it. And when you get ready to go to the grocery store, Alexa will tell you everything you've added to your list. Alexa can also have a to-do list. You can program Alexa to call certain phone numbers. You may choose to program it so that when you say, Alexa, call my daughter, it will call the number you've pre-programmed in it. This doesn't qualify for 911, but if you've fallen and wanna let a loved one know, you can use this to call them. Alexa can also access the internet. So if you wanted to know about Paris, you could say, Alexa, tell me about Paris, and you would be given information about that. Or if you wanted to know what the weather forecast was for the day, you would say, Alexa, tell me the weather for today. Alexa can save a lot of time while helping you stay organized. You can get the technology for Alexa at Amazon or your home improvement stores. Is the mail getting to be too overwhelming for you? Is it too hard to remember to order new checks? Are you forgetting to pay your bills on time? Automatic online bill pay may be a good solution for you. Automatic bill pay allows you to set up an account that automatically deducts the payment from your checking account or another account you deem to use. It alleviates the stress of having to remember if you've paid a bill or not. You can pay for your water, electric, gas, or mortgage, just about any type of bill electronically over the internet with automatic online bill pay. We can use many of the tips we just learned about to reach out to friends and family far and near. It is important to make connections and to try and maintain connections over time. Picking up the phone and calling them to talk about a trip you went on together or a funny story you remember from the past can be good for your brain. We need connections with other people, and sometimes that is the first thing we let go when a diagnosis is given. Find time to reconnect with friends and loved ones. I hope that you have enjoyed our time together. Remember that music and art can help take us to many different places, as well as being great activities for your brain. We encourage you to go, 
and explore.